Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Welcome to episode 34. Today we have built a bit of a mock space shuttle here, actually. It's, uh, it's a little different, though. We have a bit of an X-Wing going on here at the back. If you recall way back to episode 26, we sent the huge Prosperity space station up to do some research on an asteroid. And we actually did redirect that asteroid too. Before this though, we actually sent out a team of 17 super trained Kerbals which had their super training mission, so they're all level 5s. Now, we actually want to get some of these Kerbals back. Currently we have a launch facility here which has basically got hardly any experienced Kerbals. They're all up on the Prosperity Space Station. Now there's two reasons why we want to bring some of these back. Firstly, we want to take some of them on a new mission. And secondly, Burberry Kerman is getting very tired of doing all the dangerous stunts here by himself. And as you've seen from previous episodes, he has been absolutely getting pummeled by all sorts of crazy experiments. Obviously, as the real shuttle did, we're tilting this thing over with the shuttle upside down, basically passing now up through the upper atmosphere, just shutting down the very outside mammoth engines. And this is so that the very fully fueled space shuttle is still actually not going to be tipping the whole vessel over as we keep thrusting forwards. As we fly well past orbital velocity, we are going to shut down our engines. We're going to disconnect our fully fueled space shuttle here. And because our periapsis is still so low, we can actually let our booster fall harmlessly back down into the atmosphere, leaving of course our space free of debris. Now we have Burberry Kerman and Verissa Kerman here. They are going to be our little test pilots for this space shuttle. Hopefully we've built this thing pretty well, but I must admit there is a good reason you don't see me flying too many space planes around. That's because I'm not very good at building them, frankly. Of course, all that being said, space planes are very, very cool. And what we want to do now is get this space plane all the way up to intercept with our Prosperity space station that is in a very, very high orbit up well out past Minmus. Just raising our periapsis enough there so that we don't fall back into the atmosphere. And we next need to make sure that our inclination is quite perfectly matched with the Prosperity space station so that we can meet up with it at any point in our orbit. We're making the adjustment at the ascending node, meaning we need to make an anti-normal burner and wipe off that inclination difference. There we go, that will do there. We can fine tune this if we need to later. Now we'll just set up a manoeuvre node to eject us way out and meet up with the Prosperity Space Station. Probably could have timed our launch a little better so that our periapsis would have been around the point that we were doing our burn, but no matter. We have plenty of fuel in this thing to complete our mission, so it will not be a problem. There we go there. We will now time warp around to our maneuver node so that we can begin doing our burn to escape from a low Kerbin orbit. Just coming in to do our burn here. And... There we go, we have a burn here to do of around 830 meters per second. So burning here now. We need to come way up above the moon's orbit, even above Minmus's orbit. And this is because we parked our asteroid and the Prosperity Space Station on a very, very high orbit simply so that vessels could come all the way up here, refuel full, and then plunge back down into Kerbin's gravity well to take advantage of the O-Birth effect, which will decrease the Delta V requirements needed to transfer to other bodies in the Kerbal system. So now that we've got our main burn complete and our interceptors close, we're going to switch on our RCS, and this is going to allow us to do some very, very small adjustments using the H and N keys so that we can get that intercept even closer. There we go there, we have a very close intercept planned there now. We're going to time warp right up until we're much closer to our target. And this is simply so that our small adjustments will actually be more accurate when we're closer to the Prosperity Space Station. So up here we'll do a small little adjustment again just to get our intercept as close as possible. Again, using the RCS, this is a very good way to fine-tune. So do use your RCS when you're doing this sort of thing. 
Just time warping in there, switching to target mode, and we will turn now retrograde so that we can wipe off that relative velocity. Over 200 meters per second we need to wipe off to make sure, of course, that we are traveling in the exact same orbit as the Prosperity Space Station, meaning, of course, that we will then be traveling together at the same speed. Just time warping still until the Prosperity Space Station starts flying past us, and then we are going to execute our burn the problem with the three vector engines on the back of this thing is that they are very overpowered. In fact, it's possibly a little more like trying to light a candle with a flamethrower. It's kind of a little extreme. The next thing we want to do, now that we've wiped off the vast majority of that relative velocity, we need to then point towards our target and just do a small burn here. An extra 50 meters per second isn't going to hurt. As the distance to the Prosperity Space Station drops below 2.5 kilometers, you'll see that this will start to actually dog out a little more. I'm speeding up the video at this point because the frame rate drop is actually a little bad on my little machine. The station itself has a lot of parts, and now that we've added this space shuttle to that part count in this frame, the part count here is getting now pretty damn high. As we come in for approach, we'll open up that shielded docking port. And of course, I noticed at this point that the docking port was on sideways. So yeah, that sucked. This basically means that I can't use the docking port as our reference for control. What we need to use instead is the actual MK3 module. So this is just going to make docking this very, very large vessel with a very small docking port just that little bit harder. Now what we're going to do here is dock the front of this space plane to the side of the fuel tanks down at the opposite side of the vessel there. So we're spinning this whole thing around. The one thing that you do need to keep in mind when you're docking something of this size is to be patient. It takes quite some time to get your vessels lined up perfectly so that you can come in and dock successfully. Even I took quite a long time to actually get this thing lined up. I'm skipping over a lot of this here now because I'm sure that even you don't want to watch me for five minutes trying to get this vessel lined up. It was, uh, it was tough actually, mainly because of that docking port issue. But after a little trial and error, finally it came together and we docked there like that. The first thing we're going to do here is transfer all of our Kerbals with the exception of five. We're going to leave two engineers, two scientists and one pilot on board the Prosperity Space Station. Everyone else is coming off. They have had a massively long shift up here for months now, processing the ore and doing all that wonderful scientific research. Of course, we have a few other surprises on this mission. The first thing we need to do is get rid of the claw that is out the front of our Prosperity Space Station. We're going to dock this back inside the cargo bay of the station. <laughs> Piloting these little vessels around with RCS is actually really fun. It's a great way to practice docking uh, if you have a few of these things. So just coming in here now and... We'll get that docked right there. So simple as that. We will close up that MK3 cargo bay. What we have is a new module here since version 1.2 was released. We have not modified the Prosperity Space Station, so we need a new satellite dish that is relay capable. Just depending on how far out of Kerbin's sphere of influence we go, we need something much, much bigger. We also need to be able to relay signals through this station so again, using the RCS here just to drive this thing around. I don't know who taught me to drive this thing. It's uh, I'm just going all over the place. Come on, get back on track. And there we go, docked it there. So now that the station has had its upgrade, what we now want to do is take some ore back to Kerbin. So we're going to transfer some ore from our ore tanks where we collected our ore sample from the asteroid here quite a few episodes ago. We're going to transfer that into our space shuttle. So our mission here is complete. We are going to undock 
We have upgraded our Prosperity Space Station. We've transferred the crew we need to come back to Kerbin and we have collected our ore samples to return to our research and development center as well. So back we come. I must admit I do love the Prosperity Space Station. It looks very cool. If you want to check out how this thing came together, head back to episode 20 and check out the piece by piece build I did of this over several episodes. As we head away here, we will close up our shielded docking port and prepare to do our retrograde burn to drop back down into Kerbin's gravity well so that we can come down and land back on the surface of Kerbin. As we fall towards Kerbin, we're just going to do a slight radial inburn here just to bring our periaps down to around 35 kilometers. The reason we didn't do this beforehand was because we were actually intercepting with the moon uh, when we came down right on 35 kilometers. So we needed to do this after we passed the moon's orbit. We're going to make several passes through the atmosphere to slowly wipe off a lot of our velocity. What you can do is do a bit of a spin like this just to even out the heat distribution around the vessel as you are coming through, especially for the first time when you're knocking off a great deal of velocity. I'm kind of surprised actually that I was able to put this together first time with it not being unbalanced one way or the other. The one thing that is always difficult about space planes is they tend to become unbalanced when you transfer fuel or burn fuel I should say and especially now that we have got uh, a whole heap of ore loaded into the front of this thing it might make it a little less stable coming down to land. We'll soon find out. So now that we're coming up for our second pass through the atmosphere we still have quite a lot of velocity to knock off still doing over 3000 meters per second so again we're going to distribute that heat by rolling if we need to. Another thing we might do here actually is lower our altitude a little by basically pointing downwards. The best way to point downwards with a space plane is to actually um, do it in reverse so that most of the heat is actually hitting the underside of your vessel rather than all of the more sensitive equipment up on top of the vessel. Now of course the reason we need to do all of these passes through the atmosphere is really because the space plane parts in Kerbal Space Program, uh, well, they're, they're pretty sucky, really. They, they don't have any ablator on them. There's no, there's no sort of heat tolerance to the parts that will let you get through the atmosphere in the one pass, especially if you're coming back from a lunar orbit, a moonar orbit, I should say. I mean, the heat tolerance system isn't terrible. You do have quite a high temperature limit on all of the main larger space plane parts. But yeah, not having the ablator um, and any of that sort of stuff is, is quite a disadvantage to space planes. So around we come again. The space shuttle in real life, of course, had a thermal protection system made up of a whole heap of interconnected tiles. The tiles, of course, would protect the space shuttle from the searing re-entry heat, and it would also provide, well, very good insulation for the deep cold in space while outside of the atmosphere. This time our orbit is low enough to plan our landing back at the Kerbal Space Center. What we're going to do after we pass through the thicker part of the atmosphere this time around is turn retrograde. We're actually going to do a small burn to get ourselves to come down quite close to the Kerbal Space Center on the opposite side of Kerbin here. What we want to do here is bring that periapsis right down into the ocean uh, just after the Kerbal Space Center, right in the middle of that, that ocean there. Around we come here, what we might just do is pop out those solar panels just so we can grab any electric charge we can before we come into land. We might just need our reaction wheels powered up here as we're coming in, we don't know. Better safe than sorry though I say. Descending into the atmosphere for the final time before we land. It's always handy to switch into map view to make sure that your trajectory is looking like you're going to get somewhere near the Kerbal Space Center. You can of course with a space plane always turn around and come back, but it's good to still get close. We've got the landing gear down, we can also use our two jet engines on the side there to help control us as we come into land. Coming down! Oh. <laughs> 
And touchdown there. Oh, that was lucky too. I kind of missed the <laughs> missed the runway a little. Two parachutes out the back there to help us with our braking. And there we go there. We have our five star crew back in action. And we have now got some ore samples from an asteroid to process in our R&D facility. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please do take a second to give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. All of your support helps a great deal. If you have any questions for me, please do whack them in the comments below. Thanks very much to all of you wonderful subscribers out there. And for those that haven't yet, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. So just coming up to around 1800 meters per second, which is around the time when we'll have main engine cut off to actually launch our second stage. The second stage vacuum engine, of course, is optimized to be much more efficient in a vacuum up at this very high altitude as it's escaping the atmosphere.